The Vikings snap a 10 preseason game losing streak with a win against the Raiders in their first preseason game of 2024. The first for Kevin O'Connell as a head coach, which is a weird stat, I guess, to be throwing out there. My name is Tatum Everett. This is Ben Lieber. This is between the lines. We're going to sit here and talk about the game a little bit more, Ben. Uh, it was a lot of fun it in was that fun. second half. I mean, honestly, I kind of sat back and I was like, I had a really good time watching that one. Yeah, and I think the fans did too. A lot of I fans so. stuck around. It was close. Mm -hmm. It was competitive. Uh, we were down, what, 20 to 7, I believe, at halftime. Yes. And then we, we come back and we have the game winning walk off field Wonderful. goal by the rookie kicker. I mean, you can't ask for a more exciting preseason <laughs> it, than that. It so, most certainly was. Yeah. And honestly, a lot more exciting than the last time we saw the Vikings and the Raiders meet in that 3-0 oh game last time. Yeah. But let's dive into it because that team is vastly different than the one who played the Raiders in the regular season last year. The quarterbacks were going to be the biggest question mark yeah. heading into this one. Sam Darnold getting one series, going 4 of 8 for 59 yards. And then it was J.J. McCarthy's time to come in. Before we get to that, because I know everyone wants to yeah. hear your thoughts on J.J. Mm -hmm. McCarthy, what did you think of Sam Darnold's commanding uh, command of the offense there on the first series? I thought he actually looked really good. Um, his, I thought he was very poised. He didn't look flustered. He looked like he owned the moment. He owned the uh, the offense and the huddle. And then to come to find out, as I'm talking to KOC coming out of halftime, mm -hmm. they had all sorts of audio issues with the helmet communication. Really? So, you know, not only do you have to deal with adversity of like just going out there with your new team and a new offense and all this other stuff, and you know, uh, it's it's a live game and not practice. Mm -hmm. It's not a controlled environment. And then you have to deal with not being able to hear the calls. You know, having to go through hand signals and figure that out. I think, you know, now that I, I know that information, I think he played even better. Um, of course, they would like to finish that first drive with the touchdown. Mm -hmm. Overall, look, I, I thought the, the first team offense looked good and I thought Sam looked uh, really poised. And then we have to talk about J.J. McCarthy. He came into the game right after that, the second offensive series of the game. 11 of 17 for 188 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. And what impressed me the most was the fact that after that interception, he came back and just balled yeah. out. What were your thoughts on the rookie QB? Uh, there's a lot to like about him. Um, you can tell that he's got that swagger. You know, he's, he kind of yeah. just he kind of just walks around like he owns it, like he knows he has sure. that it factor. So uh, that checks out from what we've seen in practice to what we've seen today. And um, I like his pocket movements. Like I feel like he's got a really good sense of just uh, his awareness in the pocket. You know, I saw a few times. You know, he did have to flush outside the pocket, and we did. We were we were all excited to see those sort of secondary unscripted plays from him. But I really liked how he didn't try to jump outside of the pocket. You know, he would feel the pressure. It was a little shoulder slide or something like that, step up in the pocket. He even stayed in the pocket sometimes and threw the ball and got hit. So he yeah. showed a lot of toughness, I think, for, for just a, a young 21-year-old. Um, I, th I, I did enjoy not just seeing the deep ball that we've seen in practice, but how he, he could feather the ball and kind of throw a change up when mm -hmm. he needed to in that secondary area. Um, so I just saw, you know, a, a lot of good weapons. He seemed very calm and confident. I know the interception he'd like to take back, but look, he's getting flushed to his right. He's trying to make a play in man coverage. And he's, he's got to remember that, you know, these defensive backs and they it's hit pocket, anymore, it's right? not college anymore. <laughs> and that's just a good lesson to learn on, on a day like today. Well, and that's why you get the series and do these things during the preseason. And this is also a time where we're trying to figure out the, the depth chart, where yeah. are, we are going on the roster. And of course, a very big question mark for the Vikings this year is in the wide receiver room. Who is going to be behind Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison? And a couple guys made a very good case for themselves. Trishon Jackson with 100 yards receiving and that beautiful touchdown from J.J. McCarthy. You got to talk to him in the locker room afterwards. What was he saying? You know, he was just uh, talking about just the confidence of, of himself. I think the offense in general um, and just how, you know, they're able to go out there and perform because they're so well prepared. Mm -hmm. And he he just feels really good about where he's at in year three. And, and um, you know, he come, he got a chance to come out and show it. And, you know, having having Justin Jefferson with our, our with our broadcast all of the third quarter, you know, he was even a guy that, that was mentioned by Justin about having great camp, um, you know, going out there and making plays. And then he's going out here making plays, you know, when the lights are on. So we do have a lot of depth. It is actually going to be a real competition with, with Naylor in that number three spot to see who wins out and how much playing time the fourth guy gets. Yeah, Jalen Naylor looking really good on yeah. that opening drive, making some incredible catches. Three receptions from him for six. 63 yards. What did you make of that Kane Wangu touchdown? Because we've been waiting for that guy to get yeah. open in some space, turn up the Jets, and go. And it was awesome to see. 
Yeah, I think the one thing we do appreciate about him is he he's dynamic on, as a one-cut running back, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what you, you asked him to do there. It was a little inside handoff, a little bit off tackle, and he just makes one cut, bounces to the outside and sees daylight, and being the fastest guy on the team, which I think <laughs> is still the same even from yeah. last year. Yeah, it should uh, be. I don't think anybody's going to debate him in a race. <laughs> um, but, you know, he uses that that speed when once he sees mm-hmm. the sideline to get to the end zone. So I like how he's able to get downhill and make full speed cuts. I mean, that's what you want to do as a returner, and that's what you want to do sometimes uh, when you get the ball handed off like that. Let's talk the defensive side of things. I know you're ready to talk about Dallas Turner and yes. several of yes. the new faces on that side of the ball. Turner with that beautiful sack there uh, when I think he forced the field goal on that one. He did. Essentially. Uh, I, you talked about him during the broadcast. I, what do you like about him so far? Well, I mean, he's he's physically gifted. I think everybody knows that. Um, he's got that quick burst. The thing I enjoyed about that is three plays before that, mm-hmm. um, he gets a quarterback hit. The ball was dumped off uh, to, to Brock Bowers. They pick up the first down. Okay, no big deal. But mm-hmm. when you watch him on that play, he set up the left tackle with just straight speed. He had a little bit of dip there, flipped his hips, got to the quarterback. Quarterback hit, even though the ball got out. Three plays later, he comes out on that sack. He gets off the ball and he sort of he sort of stutters. He stutters and plays with that left tackle. Mm-hmm. He gets the left tackle to stop his feet because he's expecting speed. So when he slow plays him and throws a changeup on him, he stops his feet and then he just does a little shoulder wiggle, a dip and rip, and he goes right past him. So the fact that he's able to in one quarter of play set up a left tackle for you know a key sack in the game in the red zone. Chef's what, kiss. What does that adjustment say about the type of football IQ he has? It's huge. I mean, that's, you know, I, I remember, you know, many times when I'm watching, you know, I got the privilege of playing behind Jared Allen, mm-hmm. and he would talk about so much that pass rushing, the art of pass rushing is setting people up. You know, knowing, you know, throwing something out there, maybe giving the tackle some false confidence of like, oh, that's that's all he's got. I, You know, all I've got to do is stop that one, that one rush. And he's like, you got to know when when to execute all of your tools. And you know, obviously through practice, you've got to start building that toolbox. But in a, when it comes to a game, you got to pull out the right tool at the right time. And that does take a sense, you know, innate sense of like how the game is being played. And again, that's why I'm so excited for him because he got, <laughs> you know, he he only had a few rushes and yeah. a few in a few real passing situations, and he set the guy up and got a key sack. And then he got a couple of uh, minutes off there and later yeah. in the game, doing a lot of dance moves on the sidelines. You can clearly tell the rookies are having a great time. But I I can't. You mentioned this a little earlier in this interview. Justin Jefferson joined you guys. Yeah. From the sideline, the entire third quarter of this broadcast, I can't imagine how much fun that was. What was it like, and or what was the most like the most revealing thing you learned about him? I mean, he's just <laughs> as as KOC actually said during the broadcast, as he was kind of giving him a hard time. Yeah, he is Justin is the igniter for this team and for this offense, and for him to to slide on the headsets and show everybody that's that's watching that. This is who he is. I mean, this is why this is why he's so valuable to this team because that infectious positive energy is what you you got to have that out of certain players, especially out of your star wide receiver. So we all got to see that. I mean, we walked away from that third quarter like that was the that was like the best thing. Honestly, we, some of the best, best, best TV yeah, I've ever seen. Yeah, some of the seen. best things we've ever. But the Seriously. thing is, like, all we did was really just react to him. Right. You know, he was the one that was providing all the entertainment, yeah, that's and true. and it was fun to watch him have genuine, real emotion during the mm-hmm. plays. And fortunately, thankfully, you know, we had a bunch of big plays in that third quarter. So it all just kind of cosmically worked out. It really, really, truly did. There was another new thing in this game, and that would be the kickoff. What did you think of that? I mean, it was definitely a, a different thing to see. Mm-hmm. Did you walk away with any takeaways from that? Um, it was definitely weird. I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't I didn't like watching the ball floating in the air and, and no then, one moving and no one moving <laughs> everyone's just like suspended as if it like kind of weird and they gotta wait they gotta wait till the ball is caught or mm-hmm. hits the ground and i'm like this is i, I it's gonna take a while for me to, to wrap my head around this um i saw first and foremost how important it is for the return team to have really good blockers up front i mean you have to have some really good mm-hmm. athletic guys that can move in space because you wouldn't think just a, a 10 15 yard buffer between could be so difficult but there's a lot of space for those defenders to move around so to get some good returns I mean you got to have some dogs up front that are willing to block and blocking's not easy 
Well, up next for the Vikings are joint practices with the Cleveland Browns. You know, it's maybe just a preseason game win. However, that momentum and the feeling in that locker room is going to carry on through joint practices. As a player, how like geeked up are these guys to get out there and, and practice with another team for a change? Um, I think it's twofold. I mean, I think these guys are probably ready for a road trip. Mm -hmm. You know, it is kind of nice to know that you put in a, a couple hard practices and then you just get to jump on an airplane and you get to kick your feet up a little bit. You get to a hotel room, which it's going to be a little different feel. Mm -hmm. And I think getting away from the local distractions that take place, um, I'm still I'm still all for having training camps away from your home facility. There's a lot of there's a lot of family and friend distractions. I think in the one of the most important times for you as a professional football player. Um, so this gives those guys that opportunity to kind of get away from family and friends, focus in on on really you know a couple big important practices. I mean it's going to be you know, virtually controlled live scrimmage uh, for the most part in team drills and individual drills. So um, a lot of good work these uh, at the end of this week, and I, I can't wait to see how we do. I can't wait to see that. And also, fans, if you are still interested, the night practice is happening on Monday, That's too. Right. So they'll have the Monday of night practice. They have Sunday off, and then they head to Cleveland. So thank you, Ben, so much Thanks, for joining Adam. us for Between the Lines. Make sure to watch Ben and the rest of the crew on the call for the Cleveland game next Saturday.